Oh, <laughs> you caught me reading my fridge. <laughs> I'm guilty looking I say. Thank you for signing up for my free fitness tips. Here's what I have for you. For the next three days, I'm going to download as much information as possible to get you started on your journey with as much information as I can possibly give you. I'm gonna break it up into three videos. The first video, which is this one, we are going to talk about nutrition. Video two will be about workouts, and video three is going to be about how to stay motivated. So let's talk about nutrition, because that is 80% of the game. Nutrition is your foundation. Think of your fitness journey as building a skyscraper. If you build a skyscraper on a crappy foundation, what's gonna happen? Yeah, you're not gonna get very far. The whole thing's gonna topple over. And that's what keeps happening to most people. They set up on their fitness journey, and as they do that, they start working out, they start expending energy, they start expending time, and then their foundation crumbles because they haven't set their nutrition for their goal. Remember, eating healthy and eating for your goal, two completely different things. How do we eat for our goal? While eating healthy is very important, we also want to eat for our goal. Most of you are looking for body fat loss. I'm careful not to say weight loss because that can include muscle mass loss. I am very careful with all of my clients when I ask them what it is their goals are. Do you want to lose body fat? Do you want to hold your muscle mass? Do you want to gain muscle in the process? Most times when my clients are saying they want to tone, they want to gain a little muscle mass and lose a good amount of body fat. That's their idea of toning. It's different for everybody else, but that's their idea. That being the case, let's look at how to form your nutrition for success. So when we get both carbs and fats in a nutrition plan, that is when we start having a hard time pulling body fat off and we even gain body fat. It's because the macro ratio of what you're eating never satiates you. So macros, those are the grams of protein, carbohydrates, and fats in every food source that we eat. When those are arranged and calculated properly, you should be totally satiated. It's gonna keep what we're doing effective and it will be sustainable for the long run. So like I said, fats and carbs together in a nutrition plan, that is gonna keep weight on. Protein's important, but we're gonna put that aside for just a second. What I typically do with my clients is I look at it like this. You've been to the Cheesecake Factory, right? Y'all know that, that restaurant? There's like a 50 page menu and you take an hour trying to decide what it is you want. We're gonna treat the nutrition aspect of what we're doing like a five-star restaurant. You get two entrees to choose from and you know they're gonna be amazing. So we either drop out the fats and go very, very low fat and we keep the carbs moderate, or we drop the carbohydrates out and we increase your healthy fat intake and your body starts to burn fat for fuel instead of carbs. So let's talk about the carb option first, because a lot of people go, I don't wanna go no carbs, it scares them. That's okay. If you want carbohydrates in your diet, you're a carb person, lower those fats way down. And then instead of eating simple carbohydrates, which are refined sugars, any type of white starchy carbohydrate, like white bread, white pasta, um, <laughs> white rice, white uh, tortillas, those sorts of things. It, I'm thinking, I'm like, I haven't had simple carbs in so long. <laughs> Sodas, candy, that sort of stuff. We're going to switch that over to complex carbohydrates. Now, complex carbs are things like brown rice, brown rice pasta, wheat pasta, wheat bread, rye bread, spelt bread, quinoa, those sorts of healthy carbohydrates, they actually speed up your metabolism, whereas simple carb carbohydrates will slow your metabolism down. Increase your protein if you want to build muscle simultaneously. Eat frequently throughout the day, smaller portions. That's option one. Option two, lower the carbohydrates completely. Go with healthy fats, omega-3, omega-6 sources, go into a ketogenic lifestyle. So that's what I've been doing for the last 13 years. I actually brought keto to the internet in 2012 with my company, Body Spartan. My wife, Priscilla, master sports nutritionist. It was her algorithms that set the internet on fire in 2012 with Body Spartan. Did I invent keto? No, it was invented in 1950-ish around then created specifically for epilepsy, but the benefits of it were soon after noticed. Now, 
with keto the way that I do it. Like I said, carbs go out, healthy fats come in. So you can eat all the fatty meats that you want. You can go with chicken thighs, ham, like brisket, marbleized steak, those sorts of things. Your body's going to burn those fats for fuel. And then for the other healthy fat sources, what I recommend, avocados, any type of oils aside from the industrial vegetable oil. So avocado oil, coconut oil, sesame oil. Those are all excellent sources. Olive oil, those are great too. Avocados, mixed nuts, cashews, walnuts, almonds, those sorts of things. Nut butters like peanut butter, almond butter. I love a brand called Nutso, N-U-T-Z-O. Oh my God. <laughs> Talk about yummy. But if you want cheese, you can go for cheese too. You like ranch dressing? on everything. <laughs> that is how I live my life. And I put everything over vegetables. I give my clients unlimited green veggies and I don't make them track them. And here is what happens. This is something that is completely amazing. When you lower the carbohydrates out and your body starts burning fat for fuel instead of carbs, you don't get insulin spikes every time you eat. Your pancreas secretes insulin every time you eat carbohydrates to help break those down. In keto, because you're ingesting fats for fuel, you don't get the insulin spikes. So you have one steady stream of energy all day long. Now on top of that, what typically tends to happen is you will see a lowering of your LDL cholesterol. That is your bad cholesterol. Your good cholesterol, your HDL cholesterol, that will go up. Your A1C, which is your blood sugar, will start to normalize. Triglyceride panels will start to normalize. And if you have high blood pressure or hypertension, you combine keto with exercise, your blood pressure starts to normalize as well. We are taught over the years that fats make us fat and they clog our arteries and that is absolutely not true. If you drop the carbohydrates out and you increase your healthy fat intake and you start burning fats for fuel instead of carbohydrates. As of today, I have been in keto for 13 years. I get my blood tested every three months and the last time I had my blood tested, my primary care for physician, she looks at me and she goes, Gabby, you have the blood panel that 19 year olds would kill for keto for 13 years. Now I'm not saying keto is right for everybody. Absolutely not. And my clients, they're literally split down the center. I have a lot of them on low fat carbohydrate diets. I have a lot of them on keto. And it really depends on your personal situation. It depends on what your goals are. It depends on your medical conditions. And by the way, excellent candidates for ketogenic nutrition plans, PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome. If you're a woman with PCOS, research has shown that keto helps tremendously. Diabetes, it works because you do not get insulin spikes when you are eating for keto. Hypothyroidism and Hashimoto's syndrome, those four are phenomenal for a ketogenic nutrition plans. So that is your tip for today. Very simple, either lower the fats, switch to complex carbohydrates, or increase your healthy fats, drop out the carbs, eat a bunch of vegetables every time you have a meal. I guarantee you try that for five days, every single day. You wing it without me calculating anything for you. You will see improvement. I will see you tomorrow for your next step.